What's up everyone, my name is Joe and this is Different Take. If you're new to the channel and you like movies as much as I do, make sure to subscribe and remember to click the bell so you miss out on any new content. What are some of your favorite horror movies of 2021 so far? Let me know down in the comments below. If you've seen part one, you kind of already know what to expect. This doesn't have to just be horror or scary. It could be any subgenre of horror. Okay, let's get to it. This is part two of my top horror movies of 2021 so far. Here we go. The Girl Who Got Away was a pleasant surprise. I really wasn't expecting much with this movie, and it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but for the most part, this movie is really entertaining. The story really grabs you, and like the main antagonist is really kind of captivated. Like, it's like you're kind of like freaked out. It's like, ooh, ooh, it's kind of creepy. There's a lot going on, but they pulled off. They could have very easily dropped the ball, and they didn't. If you like mystery thrillers, even if you like slasher or psychological horror movies, has a little bit of each of that in this movie. And if you like that stuff, then check it out. I would say give it a shot. Lucky is, mm, okay, I'm gonna say this. Lucky was a really good idea and it's clever. It sort of takes everything that you are familiar with, with slasher or horror movies and kind of flips it on its head a little bit right off the bat in the first kind of a couple lines of the movie there's times in this movie probably could have been funnier they could have pointed out some comedic aspects and they kind of do but they don't go as far as they probably could have so they kind of miss the boat there you're intrigued by the concept and you're intrigued by where this is going to go but as far as the execution it wasn't all there but lucky is still a good movie I'm not just gonna sit here and try to pick one Fear Street movie. Fear Street is a really fun trilogy. If you like little references and callbacks to certain eras of the horror genre, so if you like 90s slashers, 80s summer camp slashers, and if you like the period pieces, the cast is really good. You get attached to some of the characters and it's sort of like a mystery. You're sort of, it's always swerving and every time you think you sort of are going in one direction, it kind of goes in a different direction. If you like to have fun with your horror movies, this is right up your alley. I had a lot of fun with the Fear Street trilogy. The Power is a very atmospheric, slow burn horror movie. There are some genuinely creepy moments in this movie. This movie really has a lot of mood and atmosphere to it. It really utilized the dark and certain aspects of the setting to just make it creepy as hell. The score in this movie at certain times is very creepy and unsettling. It may be a little slow in the beginning, but once it picks up, whew, man. I was pleasantly surprised by Jacob's Wife. It's from the same director as Girl on the Third Floor. There are really some tongue-in-cheek sort of self-aware moments. So it keeps you on your toes as far as being entertained. It takes like the vampire genre and kind of flips it a little bit and has some fun with it and the gore in this movie and the kills in this movie. Wow, okay, all right. Yeah, there is some good stuff in there. If you like vampire movies and if you like a movie that doesn't take itself too seriously with a lot of ridiculous amounts of gore and <laughs> just over the top stuff, check this movie out. This movie was a lot of fun. I was really surprised with Come True. I was not expecting it to be as creepy as it was. I read the plot synopsis and everything, and I was like, okay, this sounds like it could be cool. It's like a sci-fi horror movie, which it is, but there are some really, really cool visual, like set pieces and stuff like that. I don't even know how they achieve some of this stuff. And what I've read, it's on the lower budget side. So I don't know how they pulled some of this stuff off, but there are some visuals in these dreams that, oh, it's just, I don't like it. And there's some good scares in there. Like, it's just some of the creepiest stuff I've ever seen in like a dream sequence. It really is frightening. And the dark figures in this movie. Yeah, no thanks. No, 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 no. Scary as hell. Bloody Hell is not really like a scary horror movie. It's more like an action horror movie. But this movie was just a ball of fun. If you like Ready or Not or like Mayhem, you'll like this movie. The main character played by Ben O'Toole. Ben O'Toole is just, man. Hi. This movie really relies on Ben O'Toole to sort of carry this because of the whole premise of it. 
and the whole two different characters sort of deal, like the split personality. How do you talk to yourself? It was something I picked up in prison. <laughs> and he does. He's really good in this. Suck my balls. No, that's disgusting. You pick guy. No, it's been done. I still don't. Fuck. It's funny. It's fun. It's completely over the top in some of like the violence and the gore, but it doesn't take itself too seriously because the tone is just right. So you can have fun with it instead of being like, oh, this is just nasty. It's really good. Bloody hell was a lot of fun. Where the hell did anything for Jackson come from? This movie surprised the hell out of me. Not to mention that the director took a break from his like holiday rom-com movies that he made. He, look it up on his IMDb. He has an absurd amount. Oh man, oh God, oh man, oh God, oh man, oh God, oh man. And now he takes a step in the direction of horror and it's like there's no way this is gonna work it does he did it the crazy son of a bitch did it it's got a really clever concept it has some scary moments in it and it's really entertaining the cast is really good it just i was completely caught off guard by this maybe i should have this movie higher i don't know but yeah if you have not seen this one yet go check it out sensor is a really good slow, almost too slow at times. I mean, it kind of drags at certain parts. You wonder where it's really going. It's kind of more of a psychological drama horror movie than like a straightforward horror movie. It has some really good visuals and it has something to say. It actually has one of the best lines describing a particular subgenre in horror and made me laugh my ass off. Male inadequacy, revenge catharsis. <laughs> Got it! You absolutely nailed it, movie. It takes its time, it's a smart movie, but Sensor is a, a really good movie. I actually went to put Violation in my top 10 on the first video, because it's a really good movie. It's just not a traditional horror movie. This movie is very, very good. It takes like the whole rape, revenge, subgenre of horror, which I'm not really a huge fan of, but it kind of takes it and flips it on its head a little bit. It goes into like the trauma that comes with that, but it also does it in a realistic way. It's not a happy or a fun movie, but it's a very, very good movie. And it's a very realistic movie. It's a really well done, well written, well executed movie. Keep in mind, this is horror movies of 2021. At the end of the year, when I do my end of year, best of 2021 list, whatever I do, that might be different. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow me on social media for all channel updates in the in-between time. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Peace y'all. Thank you, Selena. Take it away.